Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I am doing an extreme makeover. I am taking this dresser that is completely broken, that really didn't deserve to be saved, and I'm saving it anyway. I'm gonna turn it into a media console shelf. This is an extreme makeover that you do not wanna miss, so just keep watching. I have such a treat for you today. This is the dresser I'm starting off with. You guys may recognize it from my Hampton Olive makeover. I thought this piece was gonna be the same and in really good shape and I was gonna be able to paint it. But when I investigated this guy a little bit more, every single drawer slide was broken. I don't know what this person did here, but good on them for trying to fix it. Um, I got this for free and I did not investigate the pieces when I got them. Somebody just dropped them off for me and I was like, oh, the first one was great. So I figured this one was as well, but that's not the case. So I'm gonna just kind of completely take this apart and make it look like a shelf or a console. So I'm starting by turning it around and I'm gonna remove this back. I'm starting by prying all these staples out and just pulling the back off. I thought about replacing the drawer slides, but the drawers were in such rough shape, I just didn't think it was going to be worth it. And the more I looked at it, I thought, hey, it would be really fun to just try this to turn this into an open shelf concept. And if I play with it and mess it up, I can always just throw it out. And so after I got all the staples out, then I removed all the drawer tracks. I also removed these drawer stops and the little sliders. I decided to remove the middle shelf because I wanted the bottom to be big enough to hold some baskets so it didn't look like it was a dresser. I tried pounding these out with a mallet but they were pretty secure in there so I decided to leave that back one in to help with the structure and the support of the piece but I wanted to remove this front one. I used my jigsaw here, but in hindsight, I forgot I have a reciprocating saw and that would have worked much better because I just needed to cut this in half, but you could just use a hand saw here as well. And once I got it cut in half, then I was able to pound these out in the side. There was a big divot in the side where these were, but I'm going to fill that later. Welcome back to day two of this makeover. Yesterday, after I got this all deconstructed, I went ahead and measured how big I needed my shelves to be, measured for a new back, went to Home Depot, got a big piece of plywood and had them make those cuts for me there on their big machine that they have. Saves you a lot of time, saves you work, and they do it for free. So why not take advantage of that? I wanted to make sure this shelf concept was going to work before I started cleaning and priming everything. So I just placed both of my plywood boards in there to make sure that they fit and they were the correct size. And then I even grabbed a couple of baskets just to make sure the whole look of what I was going for was going to work. I was really pleased with it. And I wanted to see what the back was going to look like. Every everything looked good. I was like, hey, this might actually work. So I kept going. I started by preparing my surface. There was a sticker on top that I needed to remove. I grabbed some simple green and gave everything a good scrub and then rinsed it back with some clean water. I'm grabbing some dab plastic wood in the color natural and I'm gonna fill these huge gouges that I have on the side. I had to do a couple of fills on these, but this dries really quick, like in 15 minutes. So I was able to fill those up. Those don't, these don't have to be perfect because no one's really gonna see them. <laughs> but once it's dry, I'm gonna sand this back. And I took that same plastic wood and filled any imperfections I had on the piece. While that was drying, I grabbed my sander and a 220 grit sandpaper, and I just gave all the plywood a nice sand to get rid of all those splinters and any rough surfaces on these boards. By this time, my plastic wood was dry, so I went in and sanded back all those areas, and then I ended up giving the entire piece a scuff sand because this is a factory previously painted finish, so I'm gonna scuff it up before I add my primer. The plywood on the side was pretty beat up, so I just smoothed that out as best as I could. So when I apply the primer on here, it is gonna seal it up because it's a shellac based one. So this won't warp or stretch or chip anymore. 
I'm gonna be using the Zinsser Bin Primer and I'm gonna be applying it with a microfiber roller as well as a chip brush. This is gonna seal this raw wood that I have and let me paint it. I thought about staining these, but I just decided I wanted this all one color. So I'm gonna seal these so that the paint will adhere well. This is also gonna seal all those fake wood spots on my piece. This whole thing is actually plywood. So this is gonna seal that up. It is shellac based. So when I go to add a water based paint to it, nothing's gonna swell. Everything's gonna be all sealed up and the paint's gonna adhere really well. On any spots that my roller can't reach, I grab this chip brush, fill in those details, and then go over it with the roller. For cleanup on this primer, it is not a water-based primer, it's a shellac-based primer. It can only be cleaned with ammonia, so I end up throwing out my tools after I am done using them. So that is the reason for using a chip brush and not a more expensive brush. This primer is really quick drying. It's ready to recoat in 45 minutes. So once everything was dry, I decided to apply my shelves at this point. And when I do my second coat of primer, I'm going to do that with everything put together again so I could see how it was looking. Once I had the shelves in place, I clamped them so that they would stay put while I was nailing them. And we have a pneumatic gun attached to an air compressor. So I use that to attach these. If you didn't have something like this, you can just use a regular hammer and some brad nails. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. This is my first time using it, but it's actually really easy. All the standards you need for the air compressor are on the gun. And I just measured my nails that I was using to make sure they weren't going to poke through my shelves. To fill the nail holes, I'm grabbing some plastic wood in white so that it matches the primer. I'm just applying a little bit of this and then I'm smoothing it out with a stick. Once this was dry, I came back in with a very fine sandpaper and sanded all that out. I also sanded down the primer just to get a really smooth finish before I start my second coat. Once that second coat was dry, I sanded it down smooth again, wiped back all that excess dust, and then I decided to caulk the shelves to make it look really nice and seamless. So I'm just using some fast dry dap, putting that on with my gun and then smoothing that out with a wet cloth. All right, this thing is prepped, primed, ready to go. I'm ready to add paint. I'm gonna be doing a bold color today for me. It's an orange, it's a really earthy orange. It's from Lily Moon Paint and it is called Autumn Harvest. And I'm gonna be using my Zebra Top Coat brushes. This is a new line of brushes that they have, but you can actually use these to paint too. They're not just for top coating. So I'm gonna see how that goes. I've used this paint before on my channel and I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed it using it this time. This paint is a little bit thinner than the other paints that you have seen on my channel before and I really like that about it because I don't have to add any water to get it to the consistency that I want. And I know I haven't shared with you these new series top coat brushes by Zebra before, but I've only used top coat to apply them. And I read on their website that you can use them to apply paint as well. And I was really pleasantly surprised with how smooth this put the paint on. You guys already know I'm a big fan of their synthetic Palm Pro, but this top coat one, the paint just goes on so smooth. You can still get into all these little details. And I can use these to apply the top coat later. So win-win. 
And although I don't need to water this paint down, I did find that spraying my brush like every probably two to three minutes really helped with the paint going on smooth. And another reason why I love the Palm Pro with the short handle is you can get into tight spaces like this. This kit comes with three brushes. So I grabbed the two and a half inch brush to do the larger shelving and the back. This helped get this done really quickly. The coverage on this paint is really great. After my first coat dried, I went ahead and added the second coat over the entire piece. And once the second coat dried, I went ahead to seal. I'm gonna be using the Verathane water-based satin finish today. This is the top coat I used the last time I used the lemon paint, and I really liked the finish. So I'm grabbing that last brush in the kit, which is the three inch brush. And this is gonna help me put on the top coat super fast, help alleviate a lot of those brush marks, and just give me a really smooth finish. Always important to watch out for those drip marks when you're doing a flat surface like this with a very thin product like top coat. And then I'm switching back to my palm top coat brush to get into these details. When I'm working on a piece like this that is not real wood, I always take the shortest distance when I'm top coating. I ended up doing three coats of this product for added durability. You just need to wait two hours in between each coat. Once everything was dry, I was ready to add on the back. I'm glad I waited to add onto the back until the very end because it really helped me get this piece painted into those tight areas. So I'm just adhering it onto the back with some clamps and I'm gonna grab that pneumatic brad nailer again and attach this to the back. And since no one sees the back, if you wanted to use a stapler, whether it's an airstrike stapler, pneumatic stapler, or manual stapler, you could always use that on the back here. Okay, this thing is done. Just to remind you, here is the busted dresser <laughs> that I started with, and here is the extreme makeover. This looks so cool. It looks like a completely different piece. I'm glad I didn't give up on it and throw it out. I think this would be so cute in an entryway. It could also work as like a media console if you cut some holes in the back. I'm obsessed with this color. I'm glad I stepped out of my comfort zone and used it. Let me know in the comments if you would be brave enough to tap something like this or if you would have just thrown it out. I'll be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here you guys and I will see you next time.